Good morning. That worked. Good morning. Welcome to everyone to Pebble Creek Community Church on this beautiful Sunday morning that the Lord has made for us. As David says in the Psalms, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. May we be glad today as we bring praise and worship to our one true God. I want to welcome all the visitors that are with us this morning. Thank you for choosing to worship with us. We hope that you feel welcomed and you are able to meet a few new people. Please stop by the welcome table and pick up a visitor's packet if you have not already done so. And also be sure to fill out the contact information sheet and leave it on the back table. That will get you on our email list to be able to stay informed about all the activities here at the church. I want to also welcome all of you that are watching on our website. We're glad that you're worshiping with us. We hope that you are blessed by viewing our service. And we also invite you to come and worship with us here live in the Eagle's Nest Ballroom whenever you are available. Please take a minute to review the announcements that are listed in your bulletin and they're also on the website. For clarification, on the emails that are on there. For the music director, it is musicpebblecreekchurch.com or at gmail.com. I gotta get the Gmail in there. So that's been going back and forth with a couple different addresses. We'll make sure we get that all clarified. So hopefully that eliminates some of the confusion. Our God hears and answers our prayers, but first we must make our requests known to him. So please submit your prayer requests as they are noted in the bulletin and they are also available on the website. We are so blessed and thankful for the faithful giving of this church to the God's work and ministry both here and around the world. You can continue to give your tithes and offerings at the offering box, which is located at the back entrance where you came in, or you can also see other ways to give listed on our homepage under the giving tab. So it was great to see so many of you at the fellowship picnic at the Oasis pool yesterday. It was a sunny day with a nice breeze, and some took advantage of the pool to cool off after the lunches. So we all had a great time catching up and enjoying each other's company. Our next fellowship event will be, I believe, in November for the fall. So now as we move into the worship part of our service, please quiet your hearts and minds from the distractions of the world and prepare to worship our God as Debbie plays our prelude.
Would you all please stand for our opening hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. today is here I am Lord this may be new for some of you don't worry I'm gonna teach it to you I'm gonna sing the first verse one time by myself and then we'll go back and do the first verse all together I the Lord of sea and sky I have heard my people cry all who dwell
Good morning. The scripture this morning is from 1 Peter, chapter 1, 3 through 9. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of this salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. You may be seated. We have an uh, opportunity for our moment of missions. Uh, Leanne Leonard is here from Agua Food and Clothing Bank. Uh, one of our own, Jim, is on the board of directors there, so uh, we, we really appreciate him being able to do that. Jim Sykes is able to be there. Uh, we have long supported Agua Fria Food and Clothing Bank and so we are thrilled to be able to have Leanne here. I'm going to ask her if she'll go up where there's a microphone and uh, share with you this morning. Good morning. I'm so happy to be here with you again today. Uh, it's always such a joy when I get to come about once a year and share with all of you about the amazing things that are happening at the Agua Fria Food and Clothing Bank. Um, I know it's a warm one, um, but I am excited to be able to share with you that this summer we are serving inside our building again. I am so excited to be able to share that news. For the last two summers, for those of you who remember, uh, we have been serving outside. The first summer was due to the current situation of the pandemic. Um, and then last summer, it was actually because our building was under construction for a remodel that we were doing. And so that was a very exciting thing and a very big thing for our building. Um, if you had ever visited down there before, you would know that there was very, very little space in our lobby. Most of the time, that space was standing room only. So last summer, we started a construction project to be able to expand our lobby and create more of a waiting room with some seating area for our clients, um, and then just did some updates to our restrooms and different uh, areas in the main center of our building. That project was slated to, to be scheduled for about six to eight weeks, so we, we closed for the first six weeks, which is a tough decision when you're serving um, what we're serving, food and showers and things like that. Um, that project turned turned into a six-month project. Um, welcome to 2021 uh, and now 2022. So we just finished in January um, and then it took us some time to kind of get things put back together and reorganized. And during that time, we had lost a lot of our volunteers. So we finally reopened our building and were able to start serving inside again just before the heat hit um, in a, uh, I think it was end of March, beginning of April. So we're so excited about that. If you haven't been down and you want to come take a tour, or if you haven't been down recently, I would love to show you uh, just all the new, new changes and, and the beautiful building. Um, we're getting such positive feedback from our clients. And for me personally, when we started that project, uh, we didn't want to just you know slap some paint on the walls and create a few more seats. I really wanted, um, my intention with that was to create a place of dignity, where people came in and they felt welcome, where they felt safe. Um, and that is the feedback that we're getting from our clients. So we're really excited about that. Obviously, we have lots of other things going on, lots of other projects. That's just been the biggest one that's been occupying a lot of our time and attention and funding. Uh, but many of you have been supportive of our Backpacks and More event. Um, that's coming up on July 30th. So we're so excited. We did our signups for that program in May. 
and we have about 517, I believe, children that are registered for that program. So on the 30th, we will be distributing to them two, uh, two brand new uniforms, so that's two tops and two bottoms, a backpack with school supplies in it, about 48 supplies. Their family is gonna go home with a food box, and we brought on a couple of new partners this year that are enabling us to be able to also give every child a new pair of tennis shoes and socks. So uh, bringing on new partners and getting the word out to our community about the great work that we're doing is just enabling us to not only increase the amount of numbers of people we're serving, but increase the quality of the product that we're giving them. We're giving them more, and um, that's just a really exciting thing to be able to share with you. Obviously, things have been a little all over the place for the last couple of years in every industry, but especially in ours, and the biggest need that we're seeing right now um, is in the area of volunteers. So if you are or you know someone who is an able-bodied adult that is willing to come down and maybe just give us one day a week or... If there's a group of people that want to partner together and maybe just do, you know, every, every Monday but spread it out over four people, uh, I would love to talk to you more about volunteering. And then we always, I know as um, uh, Pastor Bob mentioned, uh, he has served on our board in the past and right now we have Jim serving on our board, but we do have open spots available. So if you're considering uh, maybe wanting to jump on board in a different capacity than coming down every week and volunteering, but you have some skills that could assist us as we plan for the future of the organization, I'd love to talk to you more about that as well. So again, it's always a pleasure. I am uh, very affectionately attached to your missions committee, uh, and so it's always a joy for me to be able to come and to share with you about all the exciting things that are taking place at the Agua Cria Food and Clothing Bank. Thank you for your ongoing prayers and support. We want to take some time and pray this morning for the uh, Food and Clothing Bank, but we also have a check for you this morning for $1,000 to go to whatever seems to be the most necessary. Thank so, you so much. please, please take that. And, and uh, let's, let's pray now. Father, we do thank you for Leanne and her leadership of the uh, Food and Clothing Bank. Lord, we thank you for the wonderful work that they do. We know it's a work that is difficult. We know that it's a work that always goes very much in, in, the, in the frame of not always hearing lots of praise. So, Father, we want you to praise them. We want you to show them how much this is appreciated. Lord, as they reach out to those who often cannot reach back, we pray that there would be those who would want to volunteer to help and move this ministry forward. So we pray for Leanne, we pray for the board, we pray for the volunteers, and most of all, Lord, we pray for those who will use their services. Lord, we just ask that you would bless them in a mighty way, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. So good to see everyone here this morning. We have uh, a nice, cool day for you. That was a joke. <laughs> and, and yes, Rick was right. We had a great time yesterday. It was just a tad warm for those who were there, but we had a good time. So now we come to our memory verse, and uh, we are working this, this month in the, the book of Malachi, and uh, that is our book of the month. We've taken away a few extra words uh, for this. So, uh, you've been memorizing this though, right? No problem? That's what I thought. But we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be sharing that. We'll be taking a few more words away next week. And then on the 31st, all we have is the reference. But let's do this. We'll do this twice together. We'll say the reference. We'll say the verse, even the ones that are missing. Here we go. Malachi 3.10. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Very good. Let's do it again. Malachi 3.10 Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. 
Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Very good. Wouldn't you like so much that there was not room enough to store it, huh? <laughs> be able to say that. As we continue, we want to go into our prayer time. We have so many that need our prayers today. Please remember, if you, have, if you hear something this morning that you haven't recognized in the past, please be sure to uh, write that down or make note of it so that you can pray for these folks later on. But uh, we want to just take some time now and uh, raise these folks in this situation, these situations up to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you this morning, Lord. We thank you for your love for us and your mercy. We thank you for your grace. Lord, we ask that you would bless in all of these things that are going on around us. Lord, we know that you are not taken by surprise with any of this anything that happens. And so, Lord, as we hear of people and situations, we know that you are in control. But, Lord, we want to raise these folks up to you this morning. Lord, we think of Susan Seatman, Virginia Baker, and Kevin Zuza, for Michael and Patricia Wilson, for Lee and Dina Eakins, for Paul and Gloria Alex, Clyde Dowell, and Rich Posniak. Lord, we just pray that you would bless and guide in all that happens. May they know that you walk with them. May they know that you care about them. You love them. Lord, for Bonnie Bright, for Mary Gordon and Ron Richter, for Jim and Tessie Sharp, for Connie Spielbush and John Hodge, for Lauren Cahall, for Barb Cahall, for G Gary Trample and Joe and Ray Mascalzo, and Cheryl McCullough. Lord, we just pray that you would guide there, direct, strengthen them. Lord, we ask that you would strengthen them in a mighty way. In a way that they would know it was you, Lord, that made this happen. Lord, we ask that you would bless our country. Lord, we just ask that you would help us as believers to be the ones that are first on our knees the first ones to turn to You, the first ones to seek Your face, the first ones to ask for healing, the first ones to commit ourselves to You. For Lord, then we can see a change. We ask for our leaders that they would begin to realize what is necessary to make our country great, and that is You. For our first responders and our military, Lord, we know that they do so much. They're the ones that constantly run towards danger, not away from it. May you give them dignity and honor to do their, their work, and may you bring them home safely. Lord, for our missionaries that we support, we especially think of Agua Fria Food and Clothing Bank this morning. We thank you, Lord, that they are doing the work constantly that you have called them to do. May you bless that. May you bless all of our missionaries. May they see success in their work. May we see many come to know you because of it. And for this hour, Lord, may we find a way. Lord, may we find time to set our thoughts aside and hear from your spirit. And we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning we're going to be talking about growing in Christ and the sermon is called Why Me? But there's a video we want you to watch, it kind of goes along with it, it's called Eye of the Storm. When the solid ground is falling out from underneath my feet Between the black skies and my red eyes I can barely see And when I'm feeling like I've been let down By my friends and my family I can hear the rain reminding me In the eye of the storm 
There are books written about it. There are sermons, much like this one this morning, that are developed about it. There are Bible studies that have been dedicated to it. What's it? Here's it. it. Here it is. Why do bad things happen to good people? Wouldn't we all like to know why there's a storm at all that Jesus has to be in the eye of? Part of growing up in Christ is dealing with the idea of why me? What that question really is asking, why do bad things happen to good people? It's basically saying, why me? Here's a couple of myths that I want you to deal with. You ever felt this way? Everyone else is doing great except me. Got quiet in here. Why am I the only one that suffers? Neither of those statements are true. And I had thought in the past that it would be good if I could somehow answer that question for people. Some will say that it can't be answered. Others will say that maybe some of it can be, but not all of it. 
John 9, verses 1 through 3 says, As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciples asked him, Why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? It was not because of his sins or his parents' sins, Jesus answered. This happened so the power of God could be seen in him. I want you to think about this story. Here's a person that has been blind since birth. He has never seen the light of day. Now blindness was a lot more of a problem back in Jesus' time. As you can imagine, they didn't have seeing eye camels. They just didn't have them. It just wasn't possible. So being blind in Jesus' day was a problem. They didn't have schools and temples and Mr. Braille hadn't been born yet for another couple of 3,000 years or whatever. 1,000 years or so. So here we have this young fellow who's been blind since birth. And it says the word man. I believe when you look at the Greek word there, which I won't bother to go into except to say, it wasn't a small child. It was an adult. This was a man who was standing there. And he waited his whole life, in essence. He had waited his whole life. And Jesus walks by and he says, Master, heal me. And the disciples pile on. They didn't ask if they had sinned. The disciple says, who has sinned? This one or this one? It was not a question of if. It was a question of who. This guy had been standing there so that he could spend five minutes with Jesus and become one of the greatest examples of God's power. And that's what Jesus said. Neither this man nor his parents sinned. The only reason he is blind is so that I can walk by and heal him. In essence, that's the story. This man had been blind his entire life just so he could meet Jesus. So, why do bad things happen to good people? In reality, the question itself is flawed. Bad things are not happening to good people. Oops, that wasn't what I was supposed to say, was it? Romans 3, 10 through 12 says, As the Scripture says, no one is righteous, not even one. No one is truly righteous. Uh, wise. No one is seeking God. All have turned away. All have become useless. No one does good. Not a single one. Paul said there's no one that do, does good. I want to read you a quote. Uh, there's a, a fellow I've, I've quoted before, Craig Groeschel. For those of you who use the uh, YouVersion app on your phone or on your iPad for Bible, It's his church that developed it. But Craig is a great writer. I love to read his books. But from his sermon series called Why, this is what he said about this. He said, something bad only happened to someone good one time. And his name was Jesus, and he volunteered for it. I love that quote. His name was Jesus, And he volunteered for it. The real issue here then is whether we as believers can withstand the trials that are going to come along. I remember one of my cousins years and years and years ago when I was first in ministry, my cousin Ron had a sermon. I'll never forget the title. Maybe that's what our family is weird. We always come up with weird sermon titles. But his his sermon title was... your pardon I never promised you a rose garden and it was about this subject and 
I, I won't use his sermon, but I love that title. Because you see, that's exactly it. When did we think that God said, oh, you know, everything is going to be cupcakes and marshmallows? I want us to look at three facts surrounding Christians and trials this morning to help us better understand how we will grow in Christ. First point is that Christians will have trials. John 16, says this, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart, because I have overcome the world. Now this is probably news for some people. For some, salvation was supposed to mean freedom from all my problems. When reality, salvation is freedom from sin, but brings on a whole set of other things. Why? Because people just love us believers, don't they? Society looks at us and goes, oh, you're the most fantastic people. No, they don't. That's the whole issue. For many, salvation means freedom from these things. But Christ tells us that while we are in the world, we will have trouble. Many times... It's like this blind man. It's just because. No other reason. Because God needed me to go through this so that He could reveal His power through me. Remember what Paul said? I prayed. I begged God three times. Please take this away. And He said... Sure, no problem. No, he said, Ah, my grace is sufficient and my power is seen through your weakness. So Paul said, Hey, give me more. Because that's what it's about. However, for many of us, faith in Christ was supposed to exempt us from trials. The gospel train was supposed to be the gravy train. Christ tells us in John that troubles will come. You don't believe it? Ask yourself these, these things. Do believers get sick? Do believers lose their job? Do believers have financial troubles? Do believers have family troubles? I would say there's probably a big old yes in every single one of those. Because we are in and are part of a dying and corrupted world. But, Jesus said, take heart. Why? Take heart means fear not. That's the second part of this verse. For here's the, here's the hope in that. Christ has overcome the world. Now, I want, you to, I want you to think about this. He said he has overcome the world. He didn't say I circumvented the world. I went around it. No, he said I have overcome it. I have gone through it and come out on the other side. Better. What does that say for me? That if Jesus came through on the other side victorious... That is the pattern that I see for us as believers. We will come through on the other side when we place our confidence in Jesus Christ. And I think we need to take note, keep in mind, whatever, that none of the trials that believers face ever take Jesus by surprise. You ever wondered about that? You ever thought Jesus is up there and he goes, ooh, didn't see that one coming. No. He's not saying that. Look at Hebrews 13. Jesus Christ, verse 8. 
Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the model of consistency. And when I am told that He will walk with me, He will talk with me, and He will take me from where I am to where I need to be, then I need to have faith that that's going to happen. Did He say that the path is going to be smooth, straight, no problems? No, He didn't. What He did tell me is I'll get you from here to there. Because I'm going to walk with you through it. He is the constant, steady force that we need. Because we will walk through difficult times. Point number two. Christians will have trials because of their faith. 1 Peter 1.7 says, These trials will show that your faith is genuine. Stop right there. We'll, we'll get to the rest of it in a minute. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. Boy, I wish there was another way. Don't you? Don't you ever wish there was another way to prove your faith other than a trial? Oh, yes. Thank you so much. I appreciate having trials. No, none of us are saying that. And if you do, please come and see me. We'll talk. Nobody says that. But he says, these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. Throughout history... Christians have experienced trials. The early church had to scatter, didn't they? They had to leave. The Romans tried to crush the Christian movement. If you look into history, the Spanish Inquisition eliminated anyone who spoke out against the established truth. Today, one of the things we don't talk about here is martyrdom of Christians around the world. It happens, folks. A lot. How many of you have ever read the, the book and you don't have to, or, or the magazine, Voice of the Martyrs? Read that sometime. Yeah, yeah. Voice of the Martyrs tells you, while we all think it's a thing of the past, it's not. It happens today. Christians are being killed just because they're believers. That's it. No other reason. So with that, I had two thoughts come to mind from this verse. The first is, why trials at all? The first part of verse 7 says it is to prove that our faith is genuine. I have heard this over and over again through the years, and I, I really like it. Here's the saying. It is not what you are willing to live for that will make the biggest difference in life. But rather what you would die for. How much would we die for today? It is not what you are willing to live for that makes the difference in life but rather what you would die for. We need the trials to prove the reality of our faith. Because you see, if I'm going to collapse under a trial, if everything goes away, and I struggle, and I don't know how to reach God anymore because something bad happened in my life. But let me tell you, over 40-some years of ordained ministry, I've seen it happen. Two things generally happen in trials. And I don't mean trials like, you know, the car broke down. I'm talking life-altering events. Two things. They're very simple. Either people get really close to the Lord, or they run away. 
I have rarely seen in the middle of, eh, whatever. Uh-uh. There's a huge passion there. Either they get drawn close to God or they blame him and run away. That's the two choices. And it's too bad because for those who leave, they leave all their support system. We need trials again to prove the reality of our faith. If all we experience is ease and leisure, how do you learn to trust in the sustaining grace of God? You've never had to use it. That's the first part. The second part of verse 7 on why trials says so that the glory of God can be seen in our reactions. Some of it we've talked about. Do we fall apart or do we step up? Do we complain or do we give thanks? Do we turn away or toward God? Will we be the conduit for God's glory? That's really what it is. I get to be the conduit for God's glory. And people say, wow, what strength. And you go, yes. And let me tell you where that came from. The second thought that came to mind was what is the point of trials in James chapter 1 verse 2 it says dear brothers and sisters when troubles of any kind come your way consider it an opportunity for great joy there's one we all jump to isn't it we go yay thank you Jesus send me another no verse 3 for you know that when your faith is tested your endurance has a chance to grow So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Why trials? Because that is where we find our growth and our maturing of spiritual endurance. And when we become mature, we become complete we become complete believers. Someone who Jesus says, I can use in a mighty way. We will have trials, and it will be because of our faith. Point number three. Christians can be triumphant in trials. 1 Peter 1.8 says, You love Him even though you have never seen Him. Though you do not see Him now, you trust Him. And you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. I want you to pick up on something in the title of point number three. I said, you can be victorious. I did not say, you will be victorious. Oh, but pastor, you just said Jesus is there. Yes, He is. The question is, do I latch on or do I look at him from afar going, hey, cool, there he is over there. You see, I can be victorious, but victory over trials is not guaranteed. We looked at the fact that the reason for trials is to help us mature in the faith, but that does not mean that we will choose that path. That's mine to choose. It really depends on how we look at trials. One of my other favorite writers, he was the pastor of the Moody Bible Church for many, many, many years, Warren Wearsby. He wrote many books, and they have put it together into a Bible with a lot of notes called the Transformation Study Bible. And one of the notes on this verse says this, This is by Warren Wearsby. He said, Our values determine our evaluations. If we value comfort more than character, then trials will upset us. If we value the material more than the spiritual, we will not be able to consider trouble an opportunity for great joy. If we live only for the present and forget the future, then trials will make us bitter, not better. If we respond well, however, testing works 
for us. I love that. The choice is ours. So how do I overcome? Hebrews 13, 5 and 6 says, Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. So I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? I think we need to remember that God is always with us. That's what I pull from these verses. He's not there and says, hey, I got to skip town here. I got things. There are other people I got to go check on. No, he's always with us. It's not a temporary thing. It's not, oh, well, everything's going well for you now. Okay, I'm out of here. No. Constantly with us. There is nothing to fear if God is with us. 2 Corinthians 12.9 says, Each time He said, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. We talked about this early in the sermon. It is God's grace, not our strength. Because if it was my strength, I would fail. That's just a pure fact. If it were my strength, I would fail. Trials are not about trying to figure out why bad things happen to good people. That's not what trials are about. I wish it was that simple in some ways. Because then we could figure out if there was somebody that did something wrong and correct it. But like that blind man, Jesus said neither he nor his parents had ever had sinned to cause this. Trials are not about bad things happening to good people. It is realizing that trials happen to all believers and non-believers, if you will, but they happen to all believers. Trials of faith happen to purify and increase our faith. God is always with us and He has promised to sustain us if we will let Him. I called the sermon, Why Me? I think it could have been easily titled, and maybe even better, Why Not Me? Because you see, God did not spare His own Son. Why would He spare me? Or you? I think we need to look at struggles as an opportunity for growth. Let's take that moment. Let's look at struggles as opportunities for growth rather than opportunities to fold up. Let's always look to grow in Jesus, grow in Christ, and realize that trials are just one more way for us to mature. Let's pray. Father, as we come to You this morning, it's always hard, always difficult to accept a trial. Nobody does that with joy necessarily. Lord, help us though to remember it is for our good and Your glory that we have trials come into our lives. Help us to look at it from Your perspective rather than ours. With every head bowed and eye closed this morning, I just want to share with you this is your opportunity. Too often, we just see the trial and not the reason. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, I don't have any purpose for my trials. I don't see it. I don't understand it. Just bad things happen over and over again. And I have nothing. You have Jesus Christ. If you've never given Him your life, this is your opportunity to make sense of the things that happen to you and to be able to grow. It takes just this simple prayer. If you pray with me, Lord Jesus, I receive the forgiveness of my sins. Thank You 
for becoming my Lord and my Savior. Help me to view the things in my life as growth opportunities so that I can be more like you every single day that I will stand before you and hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. If you prayed that with me this morning, please see me afterwards. If you prayed that prayer at home by watching our video, please give me a call. My information is right there on the website. You can find it very easy. Love to hear from you. But most of all, Father, for those of us who have named you as Savior for many years, we pray that we'd remember that trials serve a purpose, and that is to help us grow. And that is so that others can see the power of God in our lives. Help us to understand that. Help us to accept that. Help us to be joyful because of that. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand. We'll sing our closing hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excel. <laughs> to him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God both now and forevermore. Amen.